welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. We have a delightful episode today. We're going to read some Catherine Ponder. She has several amazing books and she is such an awesome teacher who was powerful at writing affirmations. She's sort of the female version of Dr. Joseph Murphy and Every one of her books has inspired me and given me greater prosperity. There is no doubt about it. In her book, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, she has an amazing chapter I want to discuss called Your Genius Powers of Prosperity, where she discusses our many powers of intuition and precognition that can allow us to move towards a greater level of prosperity. Genius Powers for Prosperity. In addition to normal powers of observation and perception, all people possess the deeper mind qualities of intuition and creative imagination, as well as special powers to be discussed here. People whom the world considers to be of genius caliber are those who have had the courage and confidence to listen to their intuition and creative imagination and who follow its guidance. As they follow their inner leadings, the results are usually so wonderful that others believe that they have unusual gifts. They do not really possess unusual powers. They are instead actively using their intuition and creative imagination rather than stifling these mind powers as most of us are inclined to do. We too can stimulate our intuition and creative imagination as genius powers for prosperity, success, and more satisfying living. As you develop your genius powers, you may seem to be listening at times to that different drummer of whom Henry David Thoreau wrote, I've always had a highly developed intuitive nature, and it often confused me because I did not understand it. I had been given the impression that if I obeyed it, I was being strange, eccentric, even abnormal. Often as a child, I could not explain to other people what it was or why I felt compelled at times to follow its promptings. I found, on the other hand, that if I did not obey the hunch, inner prompting, or sixth sense idea that persisted, my world became confused and unhappy. I discovered that when I followed my hunches faithfully, I was inevitably led to the right result. You will find on looking over the people in your midst who have been baptized with originality, that they have let the world's thinking alone and so creative new knowledge has been free to express through them. The world needs this kind of original thought in this exciting progressive era in which we now live. From a prosperity standpoint, people have not known what to do with their genius powers of intuition and creative imagination. Those who developed that inner feeling or knowledge that flashes to all of us at times were usually considered odd or abnormal by their business associates if they expressed rather than suppressed it. Most of us were taught not to take such people seriously. However, in this enlightened age, we are beginning to realize that while we are humanly equipped with only five physical senses as mental and spiritual beings, we are born with powers of the mind that are little recognized and little used. It is these unexplored faculties of the mind that seem to have genius power for producing prosperous, successful living. Because our attention is regularly turned to the outer world of activities, we do not hear or heed the guidance of intuition. A businessman recently said that if we could make a record of our intuitive promptings, we would be astonished at how many times they would have revealed the right path if we had followed through on those promptings. We have all heard the term women's intuition, often used somewhat humorously. The general belief is that intuition is perhaps a peculiar but trivial quirk in women, but hardly dependable enough for men. We are now learning, however, that everyone has intuition, both men and women. If women have seemed to develop their intuitive nature more noticeably than men, perhaps it's because man's attention has been turned more toward the world of business and similar external demands. Such interests can be distracting when we are developing our mental powers. Woman's place is traditionally in the home, usually a quieter atmosphere, more conducive for responding to inner promptings of her intuitive nature. However, in these modern times, the situation has changed. Both men and women's attentions are given to business 
and other outside activities in order to develop our genius powers of intuition, some definite instruction is needed. The dictionary defines intuition as the immediate knowing or learning of something without the conscious use of reasoning instantaneous apprehension. Literally, your intuition is your inner knowing. Intuition is similar to a radio receiving set through which ideas, plans, or thoughts flash into the conscious mind. These flashes have been described as hunches, inspirations, or promptings of the still small voice within. Elijah discovered that the still small voice was the voice of God himself as supreme guidance and wisdom, 1 Kings 19.12. The still small voice is a genius power for it is your God power. In this age of general conformity, it is time to realize that true accomplishment comes from daring to be different through expressing your distinct individuality. This does not mean you should strive to be a beatnik, as Charles Fillmore has written, however, if you are educated and molded after the ordinary pattern of the human family, you may live an average lifetime and never have an original thought. The popular belief in recent years has been that if an individual did not fit into a certain mold of thought and behavior, he was maladjusted. The dangers of such conformity are now being realized. However, although pressures toward strict conformity still exist, for instance, several large corporations have recently changed their attitude. They are finding that conformity in their employees leads eventually to stagnation and production decline. Certain companies are now seeking ways to stimulate new individualism. American progress in all fields is a result of ingenuity and individualism. One writer has pointed out that the space age demands daring and persistent individualism, and that trait is usually found in a person who has learned to listen inwardly and who follows his intuitive leads. Perhaps you have not followed your intuitive leads because they have seemed fantastic and you have waited to reason through its promptings before you choose to act. Intuition is not concerned with reason, for intuition is a faculty of the mind that does not explain. It simply points the way, leaving you free to take it or leave it, to heed or ignore its promptings. Men of genius have the self-confidence and faith in their inner promptings to follow them without reasoning them through. That is why they are considered men of genius. Ordinary people usually wait for proof and consequently they flounder in the conflicts of intellectual questioning. It is through intuition that musicians, artists, writers, scientists, and the saints have made contact with the all-knowing mind of God and then poured forth inspiration to the world. There is intuition that comes to you in inner ways and there is intuition that comes to you in outer ways, but come it will if you allow it to do so. There are yes and no phases of intuition. Often the yes phase of intuition comes in such a quiet, gentle way that you're inclined to disregard its promptings, at least at first. It does not try to convince you of anything. Usually, though, if you disregard it, that same hunch will gently tap at your mind again and again until you do become aware of it. The no phase of intuition is often more pronounced for years. It seemed that the only time my intuition ever came alive was when it would emphatically say no to me through an inner feeling of restlessness, discomfort, or discontent. The no phase of intuition often seems louder and more emphatic. It gives you an uncomfortable feeling that you cannot cast off unless you follow your no guidance. You can learn to contact the yes and no phases of your intuition and seek its guidance by daily observing quiet times when the mind is free of bustling thoughts, relaxed and receptive to intuitive leadings. Intuition usually does not force its way, but it patiently waits for a relaxed mood through which to work most effectively. A hunch can work through a busy mind, however, when there is a strong need. Five simple steps for unfolding your intuition. Here is a definite formula for developing the yes and no powers of your intuition. First, realize that intuition is a spiritual faculty of the mind which does not explain or reason but simply points the way to your greater good. For instance, a secretary applied for three different jobs. One job would pay her very well, another would pay her moderately well, and the starting pay of the third job was rather low, but it offered the highest potential for advancement and job satisfaction. 
Human reasoning tried to tell her to take the first job with immediate high income. Human reasoning also pointed out that the second job, which paid moderately well, was a glamour job with beautiful surroundings. But this secretary's intuition or inner feeling told her that she should accept the third job, which paid less and surely had no glamorous surroundings. But its potential was greater because her employer had an unlimited future in the new business he had just started. Thus, she followed her intuition, which did not try to reason or prove itself to her, but merely pointed the way. It proved to be the best job she had ever had, before long new and glamorous furnishings were added to her office. Eventually, her employer rose to the top in his business, and her salary was then three times the amount offered at the other jobs. It is up to you to follow the intuition path in faith and confidence in order to claim your good. All that you see in the world about you came forth because of someone's hunch or feeling that it could be done. You can also use your ideas and inner feelings to create a more wonderful world. Second, as you go about your daily life, whether you work is mental or physical, act as though you are in the presence of divine intelligence, divine intuition. Train yourself to realize that divine intuition is right with you, is interested in you, knows all about you, and delights in guiding and helping you. As you take this attitude of mind about whatever you are doing or whatever concerns you, you will find new power at work for you and around you. You will discover a new ability to accomplish. You will attract better conditions and happier experiences. The more you think of this loving, all-knowing divine intelligence and its intuitive guidance, working with you and for you, the less laborious effort you will exert to make things right. To help you attain this attitude of mind, affirm often, divine intuition is now showing me the way. Divine intuition is now working in and through me, in and through all concerned, producing easily and quickly the perfect outcome, the perfect result. Third, as you take these steps mentally, you will find you do not have to struggle even in your thinking to make things right and better. Instead, you will discover that whatever you think about, give your attention to, or are interested in, begins to reveal its secrets to you. The dictionary further describes intuition as the ability to look at, regard, or contemplate. More and more, you will discover that the thing you look at and contemplate desires to know you. You will stop thinking of your desired good as a part away, separate from you. You will stop thinking of your desired good as difficult to obtain. You will stop scheming and trying to maneuver and manipulate people or events. Instead, you will begin realizing that through the help of divine intuition, all things are already at hand, ready to come forth as ideas, plans, and methods of procedure, and in due time, happy results. Fourth, after beginning to do everything as though you were in the presence of divine intelligence and intuitive wisdom, which knows your needs, is interested, able, and happy to help you, you will find not only that your abilities are increasing more and more, but also that you are being instructed from within about many things you need to know. Suddenly you will have a feeling or get a hunch about what to do or not to do. As you follow that hunch or prompting, you will be happily amazed to find that divine intuition which gave you the prompting has already gone before you and prepared the way of its fulfillment for you. You will discover that as you follow that intuitive prompting in faith without reasoning it through, your good will unfold to you almost faster than you can accept it. Thus, a hunch or inner prompting simply indicates that that which you desire actually desires to be yours. Desire is God tapping at the door of your mind, trying to give you greater good. That you deeply desire something is positive proof that it already has been prepared for you and is only waiting for you to recognize and accept it. This does not mean that you desire or wish to accept someone else's good. You may desire the divine equivalent of someone else's good and you should give thanks for your own God-given divine equivalent. If after thinking about a hunch, you still need a little more assurance before launching forth into the unknown to attain it, realize that you can get the assurance just by asking for it. Ask for an indication or sign that you are going in the right direction. A powerful attitude of mind to establish at such times as this. I choose this if it is for my highest good. If not, divine intuition now send me the divine equivalent. 
When doubts about your intuitive promptings arise, it is good to declare divine intuition just what is the perfect truth about this situation. Reveal it to me now and make it so plain and clear that I cannot possibly mistake it. Fifth, after having made your decrees upon divine intelligence in your midst, you must prepare for surprises. Your problems are not always solved in the way you had in mind, nor does your divine heritage of good always come about in the way you humanly expect. If you are not conditioned for surprises at this point, you may miss your good. At this point, make the definite decision that you will choose only the good and accept only the good in the various experiences that follow. Results always follow decisions. Things begin to happen that fall in line with your decisions. In these attitudes of mind, you can develop your intuition in inner ways that come as hunch or prompting or as direct knowledge from the still small voice within you speaking as yes or no. But intuition can also come in outer ways as well. After you have asked for guidance, your promptings may come through the words of a friend, a phrase in a book or magazine, or through a series of outer events that take place around you. For instance, a friend asked for guidance concerning whether she should take a vacation. A few days after asking, she had no inner leading or hunch about it, but as she leafed through a magazine, these words caught her attention in bold type. Why don't you go? That settled it. She accepted the idea that a vacation was possible, and thereafter the way opened quickly for it to become accomplished. The outer ways in which intuition can prompt you are as varied as they are interesting. A mother was concerned about her son, whose behavior was proving quite a challenge. She considered the possibility of sending him to a private school though he seemed rather young to be away from home. As she wondered what to do, she remembered to ask for specific intuitive guidance. Shortly thereafter, she opened the evening paper to these words, which emphatically caught her eye. Home is the place for troubled children. She took that as her guidance and dismissed the idea of sending her child elsewhere. She was then led to give her son more loving attention, to which he soon responded with improved behavior. A businessman's intuition said no. A businessman recently told me how his intuition said no to him in external ways. When he had not been able to get inner guidance, he wanted to take a rather expensive vacation trip and did not have the money. Though he could arrange to borrow it, the urge was so strong to take this trip, even though his better judgment cautioned against it, that he felt the need for definite outer indications. One morning when the urge was very great to take this trip, in spite of the indebtedness involved, he decided to settle the matter one way or the other. He made the decree that he wanted to know that day what to do. He then tried several times to telephone me to ask for prayers for guidance, but he could not reach me. In mid-afternoon, he decreed that if he did not contact me by five o'clock, he would consider that fact as a definite indication that his answer was no. I finally was free at 5.15 and immediately telephoned him, however his deadline had been set at 5 o'clock. Thus, he took that as his intuitive leading that he definitely should not borrow the money for an expensive vacation. Instead, he remained quietly at home, rested, and did many things for recreation that his swing shift schedule of work did not ordinarily permit. He had received his answer of no and he soon realized that it was for his highest good. He further realized that the previous strong desire to take this trip had not been deep intuitive leading but a more surface quality of human will, simply trying to have its human way. A doctor has stated that he never treats a patient until he gets an intuitive leading about just what to do. As long as he is undecided about a patient's problem or unsure of the diagnosis, he does nothing more than talk with him and examine him. He has found that it is sometimes necessary for a patient to come for several consultations before he intuitively feels that he is sure of the proper treatment. Since he has a very large and very successful practice, he has obviously proved the success power of intuition. Often I have found that when I ask for direct knowledge or guidance, someone who has no conscious way of knowing I have a need along that line will often telephone, write, or make an appointment to tell me just what I need to know. Solve your problems intuitively. When a person or business problem appears, do not carry it around nursing it and thinking that you have to wait until a later time to get relief from it. Instead, ask for direct guidance and knowledge, then watch or inner 
or outer intuition to speak to you. Begin now to develop your intuition. If you act with perfect faith on the inner and outer intuitive leadings that come, you will never be too late or too early and nothing will go wrong. If things appear to be going wrong after you begin following your strong leadings, do not get disturbed. Affirm that divine intuition is producing the perfect result and the good will appear. Sometimes things appear to be going wrong when in reality they are being rearranged for the right outcome. Emerson realized the genius power of intuition in his essays when he predicted we are passing into a new world. The spirit will be enthroned in the heart of man. Then will come a philosophy of insight and out of that transformation of genius into practical power. Insight is another name for inner knowing or intuition out of which genius power can be transformed into practical power and practical results. Your second genius power is creative imagination. Solomon was surely describing your genius power of creative imagination when he declared, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Proverbs 29 18. In interesting ways, you can use your genius powers of creative imagination. From an individual standpoint, you can develop your creative imagination as a prosperity power in a very simple but pleasant way. We all wish to gain spiritual control of future events and plans for prosperity. Every night before retiring, it is good to think of the next day's plans. To release your genius power of creative imagination, I suggest that you then use this technique. Instead of worrying about how the next day's events will come out or instead of brooding over some troublesome phase of it, simply bring into your conscious thoughts all that you know about the next day's events. Begin your early morning activities and mentally arrange your whole day's activities as you would like to see them. Every time some distressing possibility wells up in your feelings, take control of it by affirming, I bless you with God's almighty good. God's good is now gaining control and all is well. Pleasantly accentuate the positive developments that you would like to experience the next day and take control of all else by affirming God's good control of it. For the entire day's activities, affirm, I give thanks for the divinely satisfying fulfillment and for the divinely satisfying results. Thereafter, dismiss the matter from your mind. You've used creative imagination to create the right outworking of each situation. Circumstances, situations, personalities all involved will then gravitate toward the perfect outworking, the perfect prosperous fulfillment. This is a powerful method for using the mind to bring about expanded good in family, business, social, or spiritual matters. Creative imagination can dissolve unhappy memories. You can also use your creative imagination to dissolve unhappy memories, failures in business, in harmony, in relationships, and other negative experiences from the past. In the realm of divine intelligence, there is no past, present, or future. There is no time element at all. Since you live, move, and have your being in the midst of this immense intelligence, you can gain dominion over your past, present, and future. Thus, you can bring to mind the elements of any situation from the past that you would like to dissolve and clear up forever. You should bring to mind the time, place, and persons involved. You should then mentally go over the elements of the situation and again affirm, I bless you with God's almighty good. Then mentally rework that experience, seeing it the way you would like it to be. As you do something constructive about a negative memory, the negative thought pattern is dissolved by the loving, positive thought pattern you are putting in its place. Declare that the reworked memory and all concerned in it, whether or not those involved are still on this earth plane, I bless you and bless you for the goodness of God that is at work in and through you. I claim for myself and for you that God's almighty good is all there is in this experience. All else is now permanently dissolved. If apparent negative emotions and deep-seated feelings try to flare up, affirm to them, be thou dissolved now and forever. Through this method, you can free your mind from negative memories that have clogged and crowded your mind, perhaps for years. You will thereafter find that you will feel freer, more, unburdened than ever before, soon rich new prosperous ideas will begin filling the space formerly occupied by negative memories. 
Your creative imagination can, in this way, uncover new good for you. Through group coordination and interchange of ideas, many a person has been greatly prospered. When even two people begin thinking about an object in a harmonious way, there is double mind power at work so that increased energy and ideas are released upon the objective. Another can join with you. Jesus was speaking of this power when he said, If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 18, 19. Any trusted member of your family or a trusted friend is sufficient. The only stipulation for releasing the genius power of good is that the trusted one be in complete harmony with you, that he or she does not discuss with others your problem or idea in quietness and confidence truly is your strength at such times. It is good to say that trusted one, whatever is on your mind, to completely unburden yourself to them and to ask their ideas and their prayer help, often just by discussing a situation with such a trusted soul, fresh new ideas, a fresh new viewpoint, and right results can often quickly appear. When two minds are blended toward a single purpose, they seem to tune in on a higher power that is filled with higher ideas and omnipresent intelligence, which then reveals to them the right way to proceed. Overcome depression through creative imagination. When you are feeling low or depressed, discouraged, and feel that you cannot go on, that is the time to use the creative imagination approach. Talk with some one person with whom you can unburden yourself and let them help you get a fresh, new, uplifted viewpoint. It is at such times that others can rebuild your self-confidence when you seemed unable to do so for yourself. I recall one instance a number of years ago when a fellow worker had told me off. She declared that I was a complete failure could not last, did not have what it takes to succeed, and was on my way out. These words came as a great shock to me since she had previously encouraged me in all my endeavors. Had I not known about the creative imagination method, I might have just given up entirely. But I remembered that just one person helping me counteract all the negative thoughts that had been directed toward me could turn the tide. In distress, I poured out the details of what had happened to a trusted friend, who then reversed every negative thing that had been said about me, the friend declared, Now you know you're not a failure. You have succeeded many times and you will continue to succeed. You know that you have what it takes and above all, you know that you are not on the way out. Instead, you are on the way up. The friend then explained that the negative statements about me were quite unimportant. My reaction to them was all that mattered. With my friend's understanding help, I was able to regain confidence in myself. Actually, the only thing that stuck in my memory from it all was the happy positive statement you are on the way up. Often I have happily affirmed it. You can use creative imagination on a family level. In recent times, you've heard of the brainstorming technique, which is a more expanded method for using creative imagination as a genius power for good. Business people sit down, discuss an objective, and blend their ideas of how to achieve it, often with amazing results. Recently, a woman reported that her husband's company does this. They present a goal, purpose, or plan, and then they let all the doubting Thomases in the group state why it cannot be achieved. After everyone has declared his mind of negative thoughts about the objective, the group leader then declares, now we know how and why we cannot achieve this goal, but that is not our purpose. Our purpose is to achieve this goal. He then asks for suggestions for doing it and builds a plan of accomplishment from the idea offered. A marvelous way to release the genius power of creative imagination in your family group is by having the entire family sit down and agree on group objectives. Often parents struggle hard to provide luxuries for their children, whereas if they would have children join them in attaining those desires, the results would come easily rather than through wearisome struggle. A family that I know does this. They ask each child to write out a list of his or her desires. They also ask each child to list several desires that the entire family wishes to see come forth. Interestingly, the joint power of agreement on objectives and the joint mind power have produced some satisfying results for that family. Your genius powers respond to harmony. Where there is a common purpose, you have great power to achieve as long as you are attuned to others who agree with your purpose. Through this process, you tune in on higher powers and ideas for making your goal a result. Just by thinking about an objective in this way, it will reveal to you its own method of attainment. If you but persevere in giving it your attention, 
However, harmony, agreement, mutual consent, and common purpose are of utmost importance in releasing creative imagination as genius power in a corporate or group situation. If even one person is working with you who does not harmonize with your objective, that one can so fill the air with thoughts of doubt, fear, and antagonism that their negative atmosphere will halt the flow of creative ideas. You must carefully choose your associates in order to release your genius power of creative imagination from a corporate standpoint. Both of your genius powers, intuition and creative imagination, respond best to harmonious minds. Your genius powers are delicate powers that come forth forcefully only under receptive conditions of mind and atmosphere. Both your intuition and creative imagination function well in times of silence and isolation, especially during periods of relaxation and rest. I find that my intuition and creative imagination often supply me with my best ideas and guidance just prior to retiring at night. Once I was sitting quietly in a relaxed mood at home after a busy day, my son had retired and it was a peaceful time. Suddenly I realized that there was a financial matter that needed my attention, but I had not been sure how to handle it and so kept pushing it into the back of my mind. Now it arose in my thinking and I realized that I had to determine within the next few days just what to do about it. So I asked divine intuition, just what is the truth about this financial matter? How shall I handle it? Within a flash, a whole series of definite ideas rushed into my mind, giving me detailed instruction of just how to proceed. They did not seem like logical, reasonable ways to handle the matter, but nevertheless, the next day I followed through on the ideas. As I followed my inner leadings, the steps unfolded quite logically and eventually produced the perfect result. Never underestimate the power of quietness. Quiet times reflect times, peaceful times, when your mind is relaxed and somewhat idle. Are the times when inner powers are best able to gain your attention and release true genius through you. People who constantly rush about and who never have quiet, peaceful periods of reflection often have to work very hard. If they listened more to their inner promptings, they would receive rich ideas, fresh ideas, intelligent ideas that would make their lives easier and richer. A business executive recently related to me the wonderful results he once obtained through doing this. He was scheduled for retirement from his company, yet he did not feel ready for the rocking chair. He began affirming that divinely satisfying work would open to him, since he did not know what contacts to make to produce such work. He made none. Instead, he began spending a lot of time sitting quietly in his office thinking, Divine intelligence, just what is the truth about my right place of service? One day after returning from his Rotary Club luncheon, he sat down quietly and again began knowing there was a divine solution to his situation and there was perfect new work for him to do and that the truth about it was being revealed to him. His assistant came in to report that someone had telephoned during lunch and that he should return the call. That call proved to be an offer for similar work in another state. Within a week, another offer from still another company came to him by letter. How these two firms obtained his name, he still does not know. He had not mentioned his desire for further work to anyone. Within a short time, he retired from his job, sold his home, and made the change into new work in another state, which holds a limitless future for him. These genius powers develop your self-confidence. You will feel and radiate greater self-confidence about your past, present, and future as you develop your intuition and creative imagination. In recapitulation, develop your inner intuition as your yes and no guides through watching your inner feelings, hunches, and ideas that come. Develop your outer intuition by watching events, situations, and emphatic statements that attract your attention after you have asked divine intuition to point the way. Develop your creative imagination by imaging your good, by mentally seeing the perfect past, present, and future, by talking with one trusted person and getting him or her to agree with you on desired results, by forming a creative imagination group and having them harmoniously agree with you on desired results. This group can either be a business group, family members, or trusted friends. In these simple ways, you develop, contact, and release your genius powers for prosperity. Never underestimate your genius powers. They want to work for you to bring you greater happiness, success, and confidence in your ability to receive guidance every step along life's pathway. Why not let them? Declare often for this purpose. I give thanks that my genius powers of intuition and creative imagination are now released and that I happily fulfill my divine destiny.
Now, the reason I read this chapter is to kind of relate prosperity to intuition, silence, and imagination. We talk about prosperity a lot. We've talked about a lot of different techniques and ideas in increasing your prosperity. In many ways, this channel is a law of attraction channel or a law of assumption sort of channel. Yet I have often found that intuition is the key to attracting the things that you want. Everything that you ever imagined and tried to use your imagination for has come to you in some way or shape or form, but you may have denied it or not followed your intuition to come to that place that you were trying to look for. And there are lots of ways that you can follow intuition. I have several episodes where we have focused on intuition through several authors, and I've tried to give my own perspective of this in my book. Intuition is very important. You'll have feelings that will guide you along the path. And if you just look at any millionaire or billionaire out there that is successful, and clearly they had a point where they followed their intuition. They followed that still small voice within that told them that you need to invest in this thing. You need to move to this place. You need to do this thing. And that's all it is. Oftentimes the large sums of money that you want to generate in your life come from little hidden ideas and learning to tune into that is important which is the end of this telling you that silence is necessary. When you go into the silence and you ask yourself questions, you will start to get answers in thought streams and feelings. And importantly, as Catherine Ponder points out, you will get intuitive signals from the outside world. A friend will tell you something you'll read about it in a magazine. So keep your eyes open, your ears open, your mind open for the things that are coming to you in the future. And as you do, don't let it degrade your self-confidence. You are amazing. And when you lose your self-confidence a little bit, you lose your ability to imagine properly and follow your intuition because you don't believe in it. Have the confidence that you can do this. And also another important thing she points out is that if multiple people are in the same vibration, assuming and imagining the same things, it is more likely to happen. That is discussed for sure by Napoleon Hill in Think and Grow Rich, where he talks about masterminds. And the mastermind is the greatest way for you to potentially utilize your intuition and develop ideas that will bring about amazing results in your life. I definitely recommend you check out the book, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder and all of her other amazing works. She is one of the great new thought authors and... It is wonderful to read her words. Definitely tune in to these affirmations that she has listed throughout this. In particular, my favorite, divine intuition is now showing me the way. Divine intuition is now working in and through me, in and through all concerned, producing easily and quickly the perfect outcome, the perfect result. Boy, oh boy, if you say that a lot, you will start to tune in to your divine intuition wonderful prosperity will come to you. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com, buy my art at www.newearth.art. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Mm -hmm.